What's poppin' YouTube? JD here, back with yet another video for you guys, and I am super pumped to do this video because in this video, we are gonna be looking at sneaker sales data from all of this year and give you some general trends of what we have been seeing in the sneaker world this year. So we'll talk about which sneakers have been the most popular with sneakerheads, and we will also get into, for the resellers out there, we will get into what sneakers have been the most profitable in 2020 so far. The inspiration for this video really came from an article I recently read on High Snobiety, called the Q2 Sneaker Report. This article caught my interest for a couple of reasons. First of all, of course, I'm a sneakerhead. I want to know what's going on in the sneaker world. And second of all, because, you know, when I'm not making sneaker videos, my day job is I work as a data analyst. So sneakers and data, these are my two main interests coming together. Of course, this article caught my eye. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first biggest trend of 2020 when it comes to sneakers is the Nike SB Dunk. We know dunks are back, they're maybe even hotter than ever, and now we have the data to back that up. By the way, all of the data in this video comes directly from StockX, just so you guys know. And what we have seen when it comes to dunks specifically is that in the last 12 months, 98.3% of all dunks have increased in price. Now let that sink in for a second. I said all dunks, not just dunks released in 2020 or 2019. I'm talking all the dunks available on StockX right now. There's nearly 500 of them. You can see at the beginning of last year, the average resale price for a pair of dunks was under $200 and now it's up to $400 so we can see that these price increases are not small in fact the average price increase of a pair of dunks was 95% which means that on average any pair of dunks that is available for sale right now on StockX has almost doubled in price over the last year now we have to remember a couple of things though when we look at this the retail price of a pair of dunks is only hundred dollars which means it's a lot easier to actually double your money when it comes to selling a pair of dunks versus like say a jordan high or a pair of yeezys and also when it comes to the dunks especially in the last couple of years there have been a ton of outliers for example the chunky donkeys and the travis scotts which both are selling for nearly thousand percent higher than their retail price but even taking those outliers into consideration, it's still kind of crazy to see how profitable dunks have been over the last year, especially these older dunks. I know this from personal experience too. Last year, this pair of St. John Dunk Highs, I actually copped this for 40 euros and it's nearly a 10 out of 10 condition. This pair right now in StockX sells for over 500 euros in a lot of sizes. And this is something that I've been personally doing all of this year, which is buying vintage dunks for pretty cheap and selling it for three to four times what I bought it for. And I've personally really enjoyed this type of reselling because you don't have to worry about bots or anything like that. It's really like a finder's game. The first person to find these dunks are able to sell it. The word has definitely gotten out because I've noticed myself in the last few months, it has gotten a lot harder to find vintage dunks for reasonable prices. That being said, there definitely are some steals out there. Make sure you look at eBay. Also look at the best place to find it, in my opinion, is your local classifieds websites from people in your neighborhood, people in your city. Just selling it on classified websites Websites, they're probably unaware of what these sneakers are really worth so this is probably the best way to find these dunks another example of just how much hype there has been on dunks is the chunky donkeys like I mentioned before so in the first four months after the sneaker release the average resale price was $1,600 and if you look back to 2017 when one of the most popular sneakers of all time the off-white Jordan ones came out those sneakers on the first four months sold for on average $1,300. So the Chunky Dunkies are actually performing a lot better than one of the most iconic sneakers ever. Which is why in previous videos I did say that the Chunky Dunkies, in my opinion, even though it's a very expensive sneaker, I really do see it as a very good investment because this is just gonna be one of those iconic sneakers we talk about like 10 years from now. Based on all the data we've seen, we can definitely say for sure that right now, dunks are probably the safest sneaker investment to make from a reselling point of view. And I don't personally see this trend stopping anytime soon. The second trend of the year is something you guys are probably not expecting. It is New Balance. What New Balance have been doing very well over the last few years is carefully selecting who they collab with. And I honestly cannot think of one New Balance collab recently that hasn't been absolutely dope. Some of the best ones include the Emile Leon Door. There was also the recently released W Taps, also the Casablanca 327s. And if we look at the New Balance specific data over the last 12 months, we can see that the average resale price right now is also nearly double the retail price. 
some specific examples let's look at the w taps pair like the resale prices on that are insane also the emily on door 991s you can even look at these prices they're well over a thousand in some sizes and the reason this is happening right now is because there's just a lot of hype around New Balance and when they do these collabs, they are released in very limited quantities. And when it comes to this brand, I don't think the hype stops with just collabs because something that I've been doing recently is I've been buying up New Balance for like I'm talking the general release pairs and reselling those. A sneaker that I've bought a lot of this year have been the 992, specifically the gray pairs. There was also a white and silver pair and I've been able to resell all the pairs I've purchased for pretty decent profits. I don't even have any 992s left anymore. I will say though that the reselling game for New Balance here in Europe is very different than America because I just don't think there's as much stock of New Balance here. With that being said though, this is also another trend that I don't see going away anytime soon. Soon, there's a lot of dope New Balance collabs that are soon to come, including the Jound collab, which, oh man, I really, really need that green pair. And I'm absolutely certain that the resale prices on these pairs are going to be somewhere close to those Emily Door pairs. By the way, very quickly, if you haven't already done so, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I know a ton of you guys watch my videos, but you haven't subscribed yet, so make sure you subscribe. And of course, absolutely destroy that like button because it really helps out the channel, guys. I appreciate the support. The last trend we're going to talk about is Jordan, specifically what the documentary The Last Dance had on resale prices for Jordan sneakers. For those of you who don't know, The Last Dance was a documentary that was done by ESPN and also it was on Netflix. And it was a documentary basically covering all of Michael Jordan's life from the time he first entered the league to the time he won his final championship ring. And it was shown over a five week period that lasted between April and May of this year. And let's have a look at this graph right here, super interesting. So this graph shows the average resale prices of Jordan sneakers throughout this year. And you can see around the time that The Last Dance premiered, you can see that huge spike in prices of Jordan sneakers. This was basically free advertising for Jordan brand and Nike and a lot of things actually had to go right for this to happen, such as this pandemic, which basically killed all live sports. So this documentary was pretty much the only sport on TV for that five week period. And this documentary did two things for the recent sneakerheads that pretty much just bought Jordan sneakers because of hype. They were now introduced to Michael Jordan himself and they now kind of know the history behind the brand and for the older sneakerheads this documentary was the most nostalgic thing of all time and this all led to a huge increase in prices in Jordan sneakers on the resale market in fact the sneaker that was released right after the documentary ended which was the Flint 13s that actually ended up being the fastest selling sneaker ever on StockX. In fact, if we look at the top 10 most sold sneakers over the last quarter on StockX, you can see that seven out of 10 of them are in fact Jordan sneakers. It will be interesting to see if this trend actually continues. I'm personally not so sure that it will. Some of the Jordan sneakers that have released recently haven't really performed that well when it comes to resale. We're talking about, for example, the Jordan 5 top three, also the Jordan 5 alternate grape, and the more recently released Jordan 1 uh, Smoke Gray Highs. All of these sneakers haven't really done that well on the resale market, so maybe the hype is kind of dying down a little bit right now. I'm personally taking a very careful approach when it comes to investing in Jordan sneakers over the next few months. I'm mainly just looking at the ones and I'm mainly looking at colorways that are very wearable, such as the Cord Purples, for example, such as the Royal Toe ones. But I'm interested to know your opinion. Let me know down in the comments. Do you think Jordan brand sneakers are continue to increase in price on the resale market? Or do you think that the last dance hype is pretty much over now and we're gonna see Jordan sneakers come down in price? I'm interested to know, let me know in the comments. But those are pretty much the three biggest trends we have seen in the sneaker world this year. Once again, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Once again, major shout out to High Snobiety and of course Fabian Gozla who wrote the article. I will leave both of their links down in the description. And StockX, if you guys are watching, it would be great if you guys had a public API so I could just go ahead and download the data myself and analyze it. That would be amazing. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and for messing with the channel. And until next time, guys, peace.